Welcome back to the channel. Today I am in the F-350. I have the open trailer connected to the truck and we are headed to the auction to go pick up another parts car. So I am getting a 2018 Charger for parts. We go inside, get everything in order, then pull in the yard and pick up the new Charger. Run into the yard. Man, they need to sweep up all these bolts and all this mess. It's a pretty interesting way to move a motorcycle around. Not mine though. Here they come up ripping with the new charger. Where's he at? Somewhere right there. Man, this thing was almost ready to fall off. It's held on by like a clip. And I think I might wrap this up so it don't fall off. Now loaded up, it definitely got hit pretty hard in the front. But when I looked down, it didn't look like any of the radiators or any of that stuff actually contacted the engine. So the engine and transmission should be good. This is a 2018, so it has another eight-speed transmission. It has a, another engine, a V6, and it has 50,000 miles on it. But uh, I was hoping that these bad boys right here were uh, aluminum wheels. They're actually steel wheels with the, uh, the covers, which is kind of disappointing. And uh, the tires are actually pretty bald. But uh, yeah, it smells like it was a rental car. How rental cars usually smell. It doesn't have that new car smell. It has like that rental car smell. So somebody probably wrecked it on a drive and uh, or a rental. The good thing is it has both front doors. This driver's side front door actually has a dent right here. I'm guessing something hit it, but uh, it was probably the headlight or something. But this should be able to come out really relatively easily. Um, if not, I'll just have to reskin it, which isn't that big of a deal. And then also what I was really excited about was it has good tail lights and it has a good camera trunk. So now I could finish up the rear hatch on the Magnum or the Charger Magnum and just kind of go from there. I also have a rear bumper so then I can get all the body lines correct and uh, start actually finalizing stuff and start, it, start welding it so it actually fits on there and I can actually start painting some stuff. If I do body work the doors, I could, well this door is the worst one, the other one has no damage on it, but if I do do that, I could actually paint the doors and the mirrors the color that I'm gonna paint the car. Still really haven't come to a conclusion on what I'm gonna do with uh, painting the doors or the whole car, but I guess we'll figure it out. Let's head back to Pueblo and then kind of tear into this thing. Just getting some fuel for the diesel truck, and this is the cheapest I've seen it in Colorado so far, $199.99. Just finished unstrapping the charger. Now what's gonna happen is my old boss is gonna lift it up with the loader and take it down to the shop. charger into the shop and I guess technically I didn't pull it in. I drug it in because that front driver's side wheel is locked up as that skid mark tells you. And uh, I'm really happy that I got this car because it has a trunk with a camera, no wing, came with the tail lights. It has doors, front doors. I could use the rear doors to get everything aligned so the inner structure and the rear doors will close and it'll just help me with the fabrication process. Not having doors is kind of, 
you know, I'm kind of just shooting in the dark because I don't know, I could kind of guess where all of these um, body lines are, but all I am doing is guessing. So now I could put a door on there, close it, and just be like, well, there's the body line. That's what I need to make it look like, bam. So I'm really happy that I got the doors, got the trunk, and uh, I got a bunch of random miscellaneous stuff. The engine in this thing is most likely good. It has 55,000 miles, and uh, you can see right there, the radiator isn't actually touching any of the accessories, so we're good there. And I also have a bunch of random miscellaneous clips and bolts. Didn't have the key in, I was worried that I wasn't gonna be able to open the trunk. It works like brand new. Doors are off. I have all four doors off, the rear bumper, the trunk. I found one of the headlights. It is busted and the marker lights, they're also busted, but those have LEDs and also the boards in them. So they're worth saving. I still need to pull the engine tranny, the cats exhaust, all that stuff off of this car, but I'm just really happy that I have good doors. So I was pulling all of the stuff off of the engine. Um, I also was able to pull the ABS pump. I have three brake lines. I have the brake line that goes to passenger side caliper, which is good. Then as you guys remember on my, uh, my theft car, they cut these lines that go to the back calipers. So I'm gonna pull those after I pull the engine, which is uh, really nice that this bracket's good. The ABS pump's good. Those lines are good. Uh, all I have to do is buy the lines that go from the master cylinder over to the ABS pump and uh pretty much just working on this thing it's just surprising how damaged it is one thing that kind of disappointed me was the engine the crankshaft pulley actually took quite a lot of damage and it broke it so this is one of the reasons why it's kind of a pain to buy cars that are hit in the front um, in this case i didn't buy it for the engine but I was hoping I could sell the engine. Uh, you can see right here, the crank pulley actually cracked the cover down here. Um, the welds actually ripped on the subframe on both sides and it just kind of buckled, which then it hit the oil pan and then cracked the mid pan right there. And I'm guessing the only thing that I could see that would have hit this crank pulley was the electric fan, but I just can't believe that it just broke it like that. So. The one issue when something hits a crank pulley like that is uh, it either, you could get lucky, but it's just such a hard hit and there's so much force in it. There, uh, There's a possibility that your crankshaft can be bent or it could be cracked. So in this scenario, I'm gonna just end up selling this engine as a core engine for somebody that maybe needs heads for something that overheated um, or somebody that wants to put a new crankshaft and a mid pan on this would be a perfect scenario. I mean, these engines are pretty, pretty expensive and uh, I'll probably just sell it as a core, like I said, and then I still have a good transmission, but it's just crazy that the welds just buckled or they just ripped and then the, the subframe buckled right there, which, uh, just as crazy because it broke the mid pan stuff, but the electric power steering rack looks like it should be okay, which is nice. And uh, over here, 
I uh, had to pull this wheel off to actually be able to move this thing back and forth. But um, the wheel was just so far stuffed back into this part of the frame. And uh, you can see right here how smashed it is. And uh, it's all the way up to the firewall. So if the Hellcat was like this, at this point, it's almost, it's it's pretty much too bad because it has gone into the firewall and then you have to replace the firewall piece. But I haven't ever noticed this on any Dodge until now. This is a, this is actually 2018. My Hellcat's a 2018, but the chargers, they have this extra piece right here that Dodge must have put in because when the wheel stuffs in, um, Sometimes if the wheels turned, it'll stuff in and then go into the cabin and that could, you know, your feet are right there. So they added this extra piece of high strength seal. You could actually see that it prevented the wheel from going into the car and uh, it's just one extra piece. The one bad thing is I can't add this to my car because I don't have these bolt holes. They actually have the bolt holes already over there on every one of these rails, but this is must be a new piece right there. So I can't add that to mine, which, you know, it's it uh, doesn't really matter, but it would be nice to have that extra piece of high strength steel, especially on the Hellcat charger. And then uh, this strut is probably okay. This upper control arm is probably not good, but the, the knuckles and all the other suspension on this side should be okay. Another thing that I was very, very, interested about was I thought these wheels were steel wheels. So I got the car and I was like, man, it has hubcaps on it. I thought it had aluminum wheels. And then I wanted to pull one of the hubcaps off to look at the steel wheels. Well, actually I, I was looking at the back of the wheel and I was like, those don't really look like steel wheels. They kind of look like aluminum wheels. And I was like, why would they have aluminum wheels with hubcaps on, on it? So then pull the hubcap off. It's an aluminum wheel. I have no clue why Dodge would put a hubcap over an aluminum wheel. It just doesn't make sense. Um, but the the thing is that these wheels are in very nice condition. They have a lot of brake dust on them. Um, I actually scuffed this one up. It really doesn't matter because this one has a little bend in it, but the other three are gonna be perfect wheels. This one has a little bit of grass in it, but uh, other than that, that uh, hubcap protected the powder coat finish on it on all three of the other ones. So we'll be good to go on some nice wheels and I could get rid of those wheels. Uh, the tires aren't very good on them, but let's get to pulling the engine transmission, the exhaust, the cats, and the rest of the stuff that we're gonna pull off of this. And uh, I'll probably leave the interior untouched because I really don't need anything out of the inside of it. The driver's seat is no good. Uh, looks from the, like, from the accident, uh, when, when they actually hit something, it broke the bracket on the seat, which is, I, get, I don't know, that doesn't really make sense. How would the bracket break forward? Not sure. Um, another thing that I noticed on these newer curtain airbags, so if you guys all remember the old ones, the old ones were like a, like a Kevlar almost, like a nylon Kevlar. These ones are like a plastic. They're like a, like a, a plastic, which I would not want this, like if my face was sliding across this at a high velocity, I mean, that's gonna hurt. Charger is now on the lift. It took a little bit of finagling with the forklift, this jack, and some blocks of wood over there, but she is now on there. And uh, I took the alternator off of this engine just so I could take a little bit better look at it. And this engine mount right there, look how peeled up that is. And then it broke the nut and stud off of the top of it. So I'm surprised that this thing, I don't know, it's uh, just pretty much because this rail pushed so hard against everything and just tweaked everything that way. And that's why this down here actually smashed the pans. And uh, I'm surprised that if this didn't break the block, it's gonna be very surprising because usually on the Hellcat ones, if the engine flexes this much, or if the, the uh, subframe flexes this much to break stuff like this and peel engine mounts like that, usually it peels off a piece of the block. So. Um, it's just gonna be kind of interesting to pull this engine out.
interior is now completely stripped. I dropped the subframe with the engine and transmission and I pulled all the good suspension components off of the subframe as well as I pulled the AC compressor and the alternator off the engine. So we have some good parts right here to sell. I'm really lucky that this electric power steering rack is good. The rubber bushings in it actually allowed for enough misalignment that when the subframe tweaked, it didn't break the ear horns or the uh, the bushing horns or whatever you want to call these on the electric power steering rack. So the electric power steering rack is good. And I really needed a good electric power steering rack for the Magnum because when it fell off the lift, it actually damaged the, the electric power steering rack and it has this weird notchy spot, which now this will resolve that problem. And if you are unfamiliar with Hellcats, most of them don't come with electric power steering. Mine does, and it's really nice because you can adjust the settings and it gives the car a totally different feel. And uh, it doesn't have hydraulic power string. Hydraulic power string, I haven't liked it for probably, probably 15 years. And uh, it's just messy. It has a lot of components. Electric power string, you just need a 120 amp alternator. And this is all self-contained. Look at that, that's all you have. You don't have a bunch of lines. You don't have a bunch of BS. And it's just really, really nice. Other than the electric power steering, I was able to get the cats off of it. The drive shaft is actually bad. It had, um, when the engine and transmission got stuffed back, it messed up the bearings in the drive shaft. It's a V6 drive shaft. It really doesn't matter. I'm just gonna scrap it. The exhaust seems to be good. I'm not exactly sure if anybody buys these. I have two of them now. Besides the exhaust, the engine and transmission actually took quite a bit of damage that I wasn't expecting, but I should be able to recoup some money by selling some parts off of both of them. And uh, the engine, as you guys saw, the sensors up here were broke. The thermostat housing was broke. This pulley's broke. The crankshaft pulley was actually busted. It cracked the front cover. And I'm afraid that it damaged a crank when it bent that pulley and broke it all apart. The subframe tweaked, bent the oil pan, cracked the mid pan. So at this point, this engine is just a core engine. I could sell the heads off of it to somebody that needs heads and I could sell miscellaneous parts. The wiring harness actually has a little bit of damage. I mean, somebody could probably take the connectors off of theirs for these sensors right here. But other than that, um, uh, I pretty much just have heads. I have um, good pistons and rods. Uh, the crankshaft worries me and I really don't know if the block has any damage from when the, uh, when it got hit, if it pushed the crankshaft back, it might have caused some issues with the thrust washers. Not exactly sure. So I'm most likely just going to use this as a core engine and sell parts off of it. Unfortunately, the tranny was also damaged. This car had 55,000 miles. And uh, what happened with the transmission? I didn't notice it at first. I knew the oil pan was actually busted, which to me isn't a big deal. Oil pans are cheap. Then you can replace the filter. But when it stuffed the engine and transmission back, the tranny mount that's right here stayed there and it actually broke the casing. So the casing on the transmission is bad, which means I would have to find a new casing. And at that point, I could just sell this tranny as a core transmission to somebody that needs a good, good guts out of a transmission. And uh, they could just pull everything out of this transmission and put it into a good case. And they would have a very cheap rebuild on a transmission. So I'll probably just end up sucking up the loss on the engine and transmission. And uh, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna profit to set somebody else back. So I'll just suck it up and uh, hopefully we can make a little bit of money back. But the point of buying this car wasn't to make money. It was to progress the Magnum charger project. So now I have the good doors that I needed. I have a good trunk. I also have a bumper to line everything up so I can build the hatch graft the trunk into the Magnum hatch. I also have quite a few parts that I didn't have before. I have some brackets and a bunch of other stuff. So I'm just really happy that I bought this car for all the parts that I needed. And just recouping some of my money is just a plus. I'm gonna leave the diff in the rear subframe into this car. There's not really any reason for me to pull it. I'll pull the wheels and tires off of it. But besides that, it's an open diff, it's a V6 diff it really doesn't do me any good pulling it out. So I could just throw this car out in the yard, recoup some of my money over time, and just kind of go from there. So I'm really happy that the Magnum project is actually gonna progress forward, and that's really the only reason I bought this car. So now we come to what we're gonna do. So I'm going to start building the Magnum again. In the next video, I could put the doors on it, figure out what I'm gonna do with the trunk, 
and uh, just kind of go from there. But I'm still waiting on parts from Dodge. So I should only have, I think, three more weeks until that last quarter panel comes in. And then I could start doing all of the body stuff, put the wide body quarter panels on, start messing with the wide body rear bumper, and just start getting everything ready so I can paint the car. It's going to be a lot of fabrication, but I need all those parts to start doing it. The one thing I will be able to do before that, that's why I bought this car, is build the rear hatch. If I can get the rear hatch done, and then once all the rear quarter panels and stuff come in, I could actually really move this project forward if the hatch is done. It's just gonna make things a lot better, and also I'll have all the inner structure completely welded in and ready to go, and then I'll just have to do the inner structure on the wide body charger, and then the quarter panels, which is gonna be really, really awesome to see that car ready to paint and ready to go to primer, and I just can't wait. So. I'm happy that I got this, even though it had a lot of bad parts on it and I wasn't expecting them to be bad. But that being said, if you guys like these videos, make sure to click the subscribe button, throw a thumbs up, throw a comment below, share with your friends if they have not subscribed or seen my videos. And as always, see you guys next time.